There you are. Welcome back. I want to talk to you about HueForge today. It's a piece of software that allows many to paint with filament using their 3D printers. In order to do this properly and give you context, I have to take you back to 2015. Time travel. Here we are, the year 2015. It's the year that Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Puth had the number one Billboard single, See You Again. It's also the year the Fine Brothers released one of their many Elders React. And in this one specifically, it had a Robo R1 3D printer. No joke. It's a robot of some kind. I have no idea what it would do. Why would you need this wire? And finally, 2015, the year your boy Joel was doing the precursor to filament painting. Really? Tell me about them. Now, before I get into this, I do not make the claim that I am the one that invented this technique I'm about to tell you about. However, at the time, I was the only one that I could find doing it. So, here's how I did it. I was working for Adobe at the time and used Photoshop to create STLs. Yes, Photoshop has a 3D engine within it and can export the STL file format. I would bring designs into Illustrator and then select color areas. Once selected, I would bring those into Photoshop as 3D layers. Each 3D layer was given a different extrusion depth and then in Simplify 3D, remember that, a new process was given for each extrusion depth. Each process would start and stop the printing process at various extrusion depths, meaning I extruded filament of certain colors at certain heights. And in doing this, I actually did something really cool. Back in the day, I was a volunteer at Nerd HQ, which was a Comic-Con offsite run by the Nerd Machine. And I knew that we were going to have a panel for the Con Man series who had Nathan Fillion and Alan Tudyk, among many others. So I was able to create the logo and print it out using this technique. And I put it out on the Twitters. And Billy Brooks, who I found out was the special effects supervisor on the show, saw it and said, that's great. And I was like, whoa. And he's like, whoa. And so I ended up printing one out, bringing it down to Comic-Con and all of the stars of the show signed it. And then it was auctioned off for charity and brought in hundreds and hundreds of dollars for Operation Smile. If you want to know more about that, the video that I did back in 2015, you can find it down below or over here, maybe something like that. Okay, now fast forward a few more years. Oh crap, time travel. Time travel. Oh, here we are back in nearly present day. Boy, that's tiring. Now people can make lithophanes using their 3D printers. Lithophanes are made by varying the thickness of the print and then that changes the amount of light that could pass through. I even printed one. It's a 2D representation of a 3D Benchy made out of ASCII characters. Nerd! Some of the most impressive lithophanes are in color by a gentleman who goes by Jason Prius. You may also know him as Pattern to Print. You can see some of his amazing color lithophanes during the 2022 Murph in 60 Seconds episode where he took part and gave us 60 seconds of wonderful. They're completely 3D printed. I have the color and I have the lithophane and together they're the color. Now though, without time travel, we are in the present day, 2023, and we have HueForge. HueForge is a piece of software that lets you load an image and then assign filament colors to the various colors within the image. It essentially, it kind of creates a height map based on colors of the image, and then you're assigning filament colors to those colorful layers within the created digital piece. I'm not doing that justice, but I hope you get the meaning of what's happening here. Now, once you load HueForge, you're going to see 16 different color sliders for the various colors that you can assign. 
And you know, if you're like me, you say, wait a minute, wait a minute. 16 colors, I've seen this before. In fact, back in the day, a PC with an EGA monitor could display a total of 16 colors. So it's 16 colors and this is just like an EGA monitor and that's what Hueforge is doing, right? Wrong. That's where a little magic comes in and this magic is called transmission distance. Each filament layer in a Hueforge print is thin, very, very thin. And at the thinness it is, colors from layers underneath can be seen through. How much can it be seen? Well, that depends on the thickness of the layer above it, the color of that layer, and the color of the layer below it. And all of that together is what defines the transmission distance. Hueforge knows the transmission distance of these various filament colors and types and then using that information can create the layers within the digital file that can blend the colors together. Think of it as a front lit lithophane. Sure, sure, sure. In fact, uh, Stefan of CNC Kitchen talked to Jason Preas at Murph 2022 about his color lithophanes and actually went into the process. And at the video below or up over there, if you go to the minute 14 mark, the process is broken down in a way that is probably better than what I could describe it. So color layers plus a white lithophane on top to determine the luminosity. However, with Hueforge, as I'm doing my best to explain, it's a little different. Well, first, there's no light from behind. Remember, a Hueforge print is front lit, so that in itself takes care of luminosity. And for color, as you saw, Jason Preus is using CMY white, and instead of us using that and blending those together for the color combinations, Hueforge allows up to 16 specific colors to be chosen with sliders to play with. Within the Hueforge software, you're given an amazing amount of sliders and adjustments to control the output of the software. For my very first Hueforge project, I used a Joelbot. That is a Hueforge Joelbot and it's amazing. So for the color sliders within Hueforge, uh, rather than picking specific colors of filaments and manufacturers, which it does give you the option, I chose colors, just straight colors, and I used four of the sliders. And this was printed on a Prusa Mark IV. And in printing on the Prusa Mark IV without any sort of MMU, it means that the three different filament swaps I had to do were manual. Yes, that meant once it was done with the first color, the black, I had to be present or listen for the noise the printer makes when it tells me to swap the filaments and then run up the stairs and swap the filaments and hit go and leave the room again. And it being manual, so it's not like I have to hover over the machine to guess. Within Prusa Slicer, you can set the filament change height that you want all of it to change to. And then you can actually set the color as well that you're going to change it to, or at least the closest approximation to give you a digital visual representation of what this geometry in meat space will look like. Now I could use a bamboo with an AMS system, or I could use a Prusa with an MMU system, or I could use a Chameleon 3D or what have you. But, but in using something like that, you are no longer having to do manual filament swaps. Oh, thank God. I gotta tell you, it's, it's kind of a really good option because these take a long time to print. So really, like that's the optimal way. This Joelbot in all its glory took just under eight hours to print. 
And the reason it takes so long isn't because of the filament swaps. It has to do with the precision of the extrusion that needs to happen. There are no massively long straightaways for the printer to accelerate up to speed. There's all sorts of thousands of micro movements the printer has to make in order to create this. And in the end, it's just under three millimeters thick, but it did take that sub eight hours. So it's not because of thickness, it's because of these micro movements per layer. Once you get your first one done, it really gives you an idea of what you can do with this software. To be honest, I, I don't really do that much multicolor 3D printing. And so, I, because I just don't do it much, I, and, I, and I don't do lithophanes either. I really didn't think Hueforge prints would be for me. But then playing with the software and dialing in the colors in Prusa Slicer and then getting it to print on my Mark IV really got me excited about this. And not only that, I'm itchy to make my next one. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not the end-all be-all here with my first. There are some really talented individuals out there making some incredible Hueforge prints. Just, just go look at Ian Smalley. His link is down below. It's just magical what he's able to create with this software. Chris Perillo, the guy that never was going to 3D print, is now doing some Hueforge prints where Star Wars and AI intersect. And he's been posting about it on various social networks and offering to upload the models that he's creating to the various sites. It's really cool to see Chris doing this. Back, back in the day, Chris started this channel called Vader Fun. Fodder Fun! I used that technique I described at the very beginning to make the logo for the channel, but in, in, in a 3D print. He might still have it. You should ask him on Twitter or threads. Uh, plus, go follow Hueforge wherever you need to and go visit the Hueforge website and download the software. A personal license is only $12. And in fact, I paid that $12 to get this software and I'm really happy I did. There are also other licenses available. Plus, right now, as of time of filming, and I don't know how much longer this is gonna go on for, Polymaker, that amazing filament company that loves to support the creative endeavors of people, is doing something insane. Because whatever you pay for the license that you want for Hueforge, Polymaker will give you that amount as a credit on their web store to buy filament. As an example, the lifetime commercial license for Hueforge is 175 US dollars. If you go on the Hueforge website and you pay the 175 dollars for the commercial license, a few days later, you receive a gift card code from Polymaker for 175 dollars that you get to spend on whatever filaments you want to use for the Hueforge software that you just bought. What? I love it. I absolutely love that. That's just freaking awesome of Polymaker to support creative people everywhere. So many people are doing amazing things with this. Just go, go on Twitter and look up Hueforge and you will find some amazing, amazing things. And I can't wait for you to see it. I can't wait to make more. If you've actually used Hueforge and made some really cool stuff, post it wherever you're at and tag me. I'm at Joel Telling everywhere. Listen. Thank you for making this far because since you did, you are awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Hueforge all the things. And as always, high five.